but when they do, they actually tend to find themselves in quite open spaces, which does leave them quite vulnerable. But when they're there, you just see this big, strong silhouette. It can be quite a shock. And some primitive native tribes that used to share the same home territories as these guys would see it as a bad omen if they saw them out in the day. They saw it as a sign of bad luck, just as with this food and there's plenty of poo as well. So we jumped through hoops for one, essentially. But because he's a hand bird, because he's so familiar with us, and because of how long he's been working here at the castle, he very much knows the routine at this point, to the point where he picks and chooses what he's eating those massive wings. And as soon as he approaches that food, those feet are going to stick out. Eight, all eight razor sharp talons are going to pin it to the floor, and it's going to eat it. It's going to be quick, it's going to be intense, and it's going to be dramatic. Is this something we'd like to see? So that doesn't know them. We're going to do it anyway. I don't care. So, get your phones and your cameras at the ready. This is going to be good. Are we ready, Ernie? We've got drama, action, and intensity. In three, two, one, go! Here he comes. He spotted it. Flying through. Out from those feet. What is it? Oh, he's just taking a detour. That was cheeky, wasn't it? He even goes and sits up there when we do our big summer show. Okay, in three, two, one, here we go! Here he comes, he's spotted it, comes flying in, and out from those feet at the last minute. It's quite compact, it's quite tight low down. As soon as you go up, you're out of space to the best you can so we've got that power, that strength of the journey. Well, but we've also got that nimble agility in the air. He may do a couple of free flight checks, so he may shake all his feathers in a rouse. Can't quite see if it's source for him. And then he may go for a number two. He may hide in the low. They start to move, they've seen it. I'm also looking out for jackdaws and pigeons, because him and his brother like to chase them. Miles and miles, they will chase them. Other side of Leamington, we normally pick them up from. Sometimes channel work and maybe even strap them. There's number two. I don't think I've seen them before. So as he's figuring everything out, the way he looks, if you watch him, he bobs his head. He's figuring out how far things are. And if he can't move his eyes in the sockets, he has to bob his head. He's like, ooh, is that far away? Right, see you later. I expected more from you, Geese. You've done a terrible job. Where's he going? No, no, well, he hasn't seen anything. He hasn't seen any jackdaws or pigeons, so that's good. You can definitely tell. Compared to where he is, his are is completely different. Yeah, he's a long, 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 long. He's just gone south for the trains. He's feeling very lazy today. That's mine. I just like to stand here on the trip. If you were here for this morning's demonstration, you would have seen um, his brother Mario came flying from the river here to the air outside the duck. If he comes near you, also duck. Because he will crash through you. As Tom gets out of the blue. So, what Tom has got in his hand there is a leather pad attached to a cotton line, and the other side is a wooden handle. This is what's known as a swung lure. This imitates the way the pocket hunts naturally in the wild. So he, Tom, so is currently a pigeon or a duck, something similar to that. Oh. He's flying very well. Falcons are the fastest animal on the planet, the fastest ever recorded, has a Guinness World Record. Her name is Frightful. She's an American peregrine falcon. And the way that they found this out is her and her falconer went up in a plane to 17,000 feet. The falcon had decided that he was going to jump out of the plane. Spotted swiftly by Frightful. She reached a maximum speed of 242 miles per hour. We know that because it's a little chip attached to it. We have very similar systems at the minute. You probably noticed that um, Tom was taking Russell around. There's a little blue transmitter on his butt, on his tail. That is modern technology for us. You can probably hear his bell going as well. For us, he's really trying to turn off the knots. Really is, but he sees something now, so he's, he's getting quite tired. You probably noticed that little blue transmitter. That can tell us how far he is from us, how fast he's going, how high he is, and for some weird reason, temperature. No idea what the temperature 
but it's not to that same extent of what Father just saw. And there she is. Uh, yes, this is the case of one more red Right. We do have two of these guys that we fly on Saturday simultaneously. However, Katie here, she's seven years old, she knows the job, she's worked in the castle and done a variety of types of demonstration and events, so she knows what the deal is. However, we'll also be bringing out Emma. She's only two years old and only joined us here at the castle earlier in the year. She came from a zoo up in Scotland. And she's a bit more, you can just jump up together, you're just a shadow of her, essentially. So she starts to really build that confidence and ability Going back to what I said earlier, how chances are you guys may have come across these earlier in your travels, so you might not have recognised them. A lot of people do what I said, is made up of these insects, dragonflies, damselflies, locusts in the more exotic countries of the There, the bulk of these guys die, and they pick them out of the air and eat them on the wing, the same way they're doing with this food now. And it looks like Emma's having to find a magpie over there. <laughs> but yes, the bulk of their diet is these large airborne insects, and that's not exclusively just the red kite. The yellow-billed kite out in Africa, the black kite across Europe, Asia, and down to Australia, they all do this. It's very specific of this animal. But going back to what I was saying about them being all about conserving energy, you can see that they'll catch it, transfer it to the beak, and eat it while still in the air. Because if they behave like her, you even like Russell or Falcon, and want to take it somewhere. So you're going to lose track of where that food is. So as a result, you're going to have to put even more work in. So they develop this convey belt system of constantly ingesting that food to really get the numbers up. And I mentioned earlier about the black kites. They're a very migratory species, and they are fascinating as well. We do sometimes get the old one that floats over from Northern Europe and makes its way to Southern England, but it's a scarce thing, only seasonal period of the year. But these guys otherwise are found out, as I've said, in Europe, Asia, and down in Australia. And it's these Australian ones that are fascinating. First off, the size. These guys are about 30 percent larger than and their shape is completely different as well. If you look at them now, they've got the four tails with the essential deck feathers being much shorter than the bottom outside. And this tail is like a rudder 